just a little bit after six o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started. We'll call the Johnson City Council work session number 23-04 to order. Cindy, roll call, please. Council Member Cope. Here. Evans. Here. Martin. Here. Ray. Here. Burkhart. Here. We have two items on the agenda this evening. The first is to review and discuss the proposed FY24 budget. Council, I can't see the screen from up there, so I'm coming here so I can actually see. Um, <clears throat> so thank you for having this discussion tonight. I did include a number of documents and board doc, but mainly, and I'm going to work off, is this decision package worksheet. Um, I think the, the biggest thing we knew with Senate File 181 that the city was going to face uh, was just a lost in valuation. Uh, and Teresa just gave me that number. Uh, but for reference, it's $48 million that we lost in taxable valuation. And really because of that change, um, prior to the Senate file 181 um, in the blue number, we were looking at a levy rate of uh, 1075. And now we're going to 10. 96, which is a large jump. Uh, also taking into consideration that we're at 1068 this current fiscal year. Um, so it's, it's a large increase. So basically the direction we need this evening as we look to set our future public hearings for the budget uh, and, and do the final adoption of the budget prior to April 30th is we need direction on uh, is this an acceptable number? And if not, what modifications does uh, the council want to see? Now, I've had some conversations uh, with the mayor, Councilmember Cope, Councilmember Evans, um, on some of the logistics. And certainly you know, tonight, let's have a further discussion. And, and I don't know where you want me to go at this point, Mayor. Do you want me to talk through some of the discussions we had? I think so. But I think before we do that, I think that um, as a result of some of the conversation we had this morning, um, I, I, I don't think the goal this evening is to make decisions or give specific direction. It's rather just to talk about, uh, you know, the challenges that we have, get questions, uh, you know, explore some options, um, but give the council members time to think it through and, yep. and get back together again. And, and certainly we talked about it this morning, uh, going as late as April 3rd uh, to then set the hearing. I think Teresa and I really talked through it a little bit. We're, we're really concerned waiting that long because and, and um, there's some publication deadlines we have to hit, uh, getting copies of the budget book out and de deadlines that just makes it really tight. If the Des Moines Register, for example, would miss publishing the budget, which we've had that issue in the past, at that point, actually, we may not be able to actually publish um, and, and meet the deadlines that, that we need to meet. So it's just a concern we have. So okay. certainly... Uh, we can have another two weeks, but we really would like direction in two weeks if that's at all possible and in the purview of the council. Can you just, so what you're, you're concerned about setting the hearing for April 3rd or waiting until April 3rd? Waiting until April 3rd. So if we wait two, two weeks, I think that's doable in, in our mind, but I think waiting till another month on April 3rd to set it and then actually hold it the second meeting in April, that, that causes a little bit of concern. So this is the first meeting in March. Correct. If we have the second meeting in March. Yep. We'd like direction and then be able to set the hearing. At the, if we set the, if we gave you direction at that meeting, yep. you could either set the public hearing for the April 3rd or the April 20th meeting, April 17th meeting. Yep. Okay. Okay. So one of the things I, I provided the council is a spreadsheet that uh, there's a lot of different areas you can manipulate. Um, and we can manipulate more items here today, but uh, the big things are, you know, the council could go in and change um, which of the decision packages they wanted to fund. Now, obviously, some, like, for example, the full-time officer in the police department, uh, that is a general fund impact. So by not funding that, that would uh, lower the levy. Other items like uh, the maintenance worker within the wastewater water department, uh, that's coming out of our utility fund. So not funding that decision package has no bearing on the actual property tax levy. Um, 
but there are three areas that have been kind of identified. One would be the neighborhood development inspector. Um, right now it's proposed that we fund that position beginning July 1 of 2023. If that would be delayed till January 1 of 2024, uh, that would lower the levy. Obviously in the next fiscal year that you'd have to pay the full amount. Um, but that by, by only doing that half a year, um, Um, that would itself lower uh, the levy by uh, one one point one cent. And, and Mike, why don't you uh, sh share with the rest of the council kind of the logic behind doing that? Absolutely, and I was going to do okay. that. Uh, so w one of the logic specific to that position is, you know, if we start the position July one, they're gonna there's gonna be some time of training and getting them up to speed, and then we're right gonna go into the winter. And so like one of the areas of that, well, that position is going to focus on is nuisance uh, and nuisance properties in the community. And, you know, it probably makes more sense to bring them on January 1, let them do some training, and then they can kind of hit the ground running in the springtime. Now, obviously, there'll be rental property inspections, which is a year round activity, uh, but there is some a little bit of logic of delaying that for half a year. So that would be uh, that. That'd be one option the council. Hey, so, Mike, I just want to understand. So that as I look at it, it says. So that's the cost of it is $69,380, is that right? Correct, sir. And so if you go all the way over to tax levy post 181, it says point zero four three oh seven. So if I, if I correct. So yes, it'd be point zero four three eight. So I misspoke. I looked at the wrong one. Okay, I, so I just want to make so just for my so for so if you did it for a half a year, yep, it'd, it'd be, be two cents. Yep, two point one five. So you would save two cents. Two, okay, I just yep. want to make sure. Okay. Yep. Um, Good clarification, Mike. Uh, I thought earlier when we were talking about this <clears throat> position, and maybe it's not this position. I heard that it was going to be paid for by. Um, uh, permit is that a different position? No, it is this position, and part of this position is being paid for by permit fees and increases in permit fees. Um, but some of it is subsidized by the general fund. So this amount is net those permit fee increases. This is what we would need from the general fund to pay for this position. So some of it, the, the work they do towards rental housing inspection, absolutely will. I mean, those are fee driven costs. But then, actually doing the inspections of nuisance property, you know, that's not a fee real generation that we can offset those costs with. Okay. okay. The second option um, was one of the options, one of the decision packages was reclassification of the Johnson Police Department uh, division commander staff uh, that would occur, was also proposed to occur July 1 of 2023. Uh, another option you could do is delay that position that again uh, to January 1 of 2024. Which uh, number is this? Uh, that is line 20. Okay, thank you. I think it is line 30. It says 20 on the... It's right. item 20. Priority. If item, you're looking oh, at the okay, chart. Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yep. Um, so that would, would save just under a penny to the levy next year. A third option that was discussed would and be. And that was something that's been discussed with the chief and he correct. was comfortable with that. Yep. The, yep. Chief McDaniel, uh, I did talk with him Friday about it uh, since he couldn't be here. And he, uh, yes, he would be comfortable with that change. And I would also note with the neighborhood inspection, inspector, I did talk to David Wilwarding. Again, he's comfortable with that change. Okay. Um, the third item, this would be item, the last item on the list, number 24, uh, the 2% compensation study implementation pool. Again, this was a recommendation that came out of HR finance uh, was to create this pool. Uh, one of the options the council could look at, I mean, is lowering it. Um, and one of the options discussed with the mayor would be to lower it to uh, basically a half a percent pool. And so when you do that, um, that would be $42,500. Uh, and that would lower your levy in itself from 10.5 cents uh, to 2.6 cents. So about a savings about seven and a half cents. 
in total with those three changes the levy itself would be uh, 1085 381 versus what was sent out in the council packet of 1096 381 so exactly 11 cents lower of a levy rate uh, so there, there's some options uh, that that have been kind of explored uh, I certainly would have uh, support I guess we're looking for feedback what what was your first suggestion I'm sorry I was still getting my computer set up yep for for removal from uh, the budget what was the first suggestion the neighborhood development that was inspector. your first one so we were not Production. we're not touching the full-time police or the firefighters correct Okay. I was only making th that earlier comment was more in reference of there's certain items if you take them out, they have an impact to the levy. Rate. I get it. And now. There's certain that don't that some do not. <clears throat> so so with the things that you've just suggested, you're saying that we're going to get we're going to be able to lower it ten cents or did you say eleven? O eleven cents. So I mean, if if you if the council gave us direction for those three items. Uh, that would overall lower the 2024 levy rate by 11 cents. 11 from the 1096 381. Correct. It'd be 1085 381. And our current is 1068. Correct. So we'll be going 1068 to um, 1085. Correct. So it still would be an increase from what we have in the current fiscal year. Now, impacts, um, if you look at the historic impacts, um, for a residential property owner of $100,000, that would be an increase of 1.65% over the current fiscal year. For a commercial property, now this is before credits, it'd be an increase of 1.65%. And then for multi-residential, um, I'm sorry, I'm showing you the wrong line. For residential, those were levy rates I was pointing out. Re residential, it's 2.65%. For commercial, it's an increase of 1.67%. And then for multi-residential, and this is all driven because of the rollback change, it's a decrease of 12.84%. We don't, as you know, don't have any control over the, the rollback. That's all state driven. I know a chart that the mayor always looks at. Uh, this is the taxable value growth versus property tax revenue. Uh, making those changes, uh, our property value would increase 4.46%. That's unchanged. Uh, we'd be at 4.60. So pretty much very right. comparable. All right. So Mike, show what the what the other chart like this looked like with the uh, 1095 or whatever that was. So it's 5.61%. Right. So you can see where the tax tax revenue in percentage increase goes above what we're, we're collecting in. So making those three changes, they, again, bring it pretty much in. Pretty much even. So, uh, Council Member Martin, uh, to, to your question, the, if, 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 if the, um, Council were to support what we discussed. Um, there would be a 17 cent increase over the current property tax levy, um, rather than 30 cent increase over the cur uh, current property tax levy. But I I feel comfortable with that because that is about the same amount that we're spending on the firefighters and the police officer. So you know I you know I feel I can argue we're spending those dollars on public safety. I, I think that you, um, I agree with you, Mayor, and I appreciate everything that uh, Mike has put together tonight. I think you made the right choices. I totally support not, you know, turning back on the promises we've given the firefighters and the police. Um, I think, you know, I, I don't think there's any fluff or excess here. I, I think I agree that what you've proposed, I would agree with the, you've made the right choices. Thank you. 
Can you can you talk a little bit about the two percent pool? Because that everything else was sort of a decision package. Yep. And so I feel like when we went when we did the whole when we spent December, we went through those items and. I, I, the the two percent pool, I'm still struggling a little bit uh, of seeing how that fits in with the timing of the compensation study, and also what we're planning to do for pay raises for this overall city staff. So, can you talk a little bit about what is envisioned for that two percent pool and how that sort of fits? And if you reduce it to, in essence, 05 percent, where do you envision that? Do you do you envision having to come back next year and seek the other one and a half percent? How, so I, it's a little discussion on that would be helpful. So I think in part, I mean, first of all, we we are just kicking off. I think today, in fact, Wednesday, uh, the actual work on the compensation classification work, <coughs> and what that will do is really look at um, every position, union and non-union, on how they rate in a market setting uh, to their peer kind of positions. Uh, we believe, I think we, we, we understand that we're probably behind the market. Some positions are going to be probably very close. Other positions will likely be way off compared to their peer positions. And so I think this pool is how do we, when we get that study and when it's finalized, how do we try to systematically go through and make adjustments? And so the idea was not anyone, not everyone would get a 2% increase, but if your position was like 14% off, you may get adjusted a little bit. A position that's maybe 5% off, you may just still be 5% off when it's all done. You know, try to find those outliers that are out there and make adjustments where we can appropriately. Um, now, obviously that's gonna be geared more towards your non-union because your union is two collective bargaining uh, well, we have two of the three collective bargaining agreements that we have now settled. We have tentative agreements with. Uh, the third one, we're going through arbitration. And by the time we get to June, when this classification compensation study is done, uh, we'll be in a position where, you know, we'll have us, we'll know what their wages at least are for a year, uh, possibly more years, depending on how that whole contract uh, gets settled or not settled. Uh, and so the idea is instead of just waiting an entire another fiscal year, uh, we can make some adjustments right away once we get that. Uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong, and I, I don't know the a firefighter or the ask me very well, but like firefighter union, it's a, can you maybe talk a little bit about those two? Percentage, both in percentage and then steps, how that all looks. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, firefighters, we have not settled with, as you know, we're going to mediation. <laughs> Excuse me. And um, our last offer um, was um, substantially higher than uh, a 6% raise. Um, it was to get them closer to their um, steps. I believe the average, I think the average was in about eight, seven or 8% each year for the three years to try to get them to market by um, the third year of their contract. Um, police, again, is uh, seven, six to seven percent increase depending on their year. And then AFSME is um, 433. Uh, I would note that the, how we got to that 2%, Tom, is uh, you know back when we started with the budget clear back last September October in our discussions, we talked about the fact that we um, thought we were anywhere between six to ten percent below market on a lot of positions, and um, we received direction from you folks, um, <clears throat> and we had we, and we received that direction from you folks after we had already put in our initial budgeted figures and our initial budget figures for wages were at 8% for all employees. And then when we ran all those numbers and we sat down and started having our work sessions with you, we realized that that, that wasn't going to be palatable, I guess, to have at least 8% built in for everyone. We thought that's what we would need to catch everyone up to market. So we went back down to six and the finance committee uh, decided 
let's do the six, but if we can have the pool of 2% available, so when we got the study back, we'd have some money to make the adjustments we needed to make, maybe we could do that and it might take us years. If you remember right when we did our last comp study, I think it took us about three to four years um, to at least get everyone um, out of, uh, well, even a couple of years, we had to add some in so that they at least made the minimum of their pay grade. But for several years, we had people that were uh, well over 20 to 25% below their market wage. And so we had to really move some people up. And each year I do that study and I report back to you how many people are still within 5% of their market, how many are within 10% of the market, how many are um, over market, if we had anybody over market and then anybody who wasn't in market. In the last several years, the initial response has always been, if they're not in the range, we have to move them in the range. We have to get them into the range and slightly above starting wage. So they're at least all in the ranges. So we were able to do that. And our anticipation and our hope, of course, is that when we get this study back, you know, hopefully we don't have anybody like that. But if we do, we're, I guess I personally was anticipating it's gonna take a few years to get everybody where they may need to be. We can't do it all at once, but it'd be nice to have a pot of money. And this pot of money was going to be for union and non-union positions. And if we get that study back and, and we find the police by chance, even though we've already settled with them, are substantially underpaid or AFSCME is substantially underpaid or the fire or any of those positions, I know they're gonna come back to this council, to us as management and say, that's why you did that study. How are you going to address that or fix that? So that's kind of a little bit more of the story of how we got to the two. For, for, so we went from eight to six and then we used the two as, as part of a pool. So we'd have that money available. That's very helpful. That's, that's good, to, good kind of background. Do you envision that there would be a need for this 2%, another 2% pool in out years as well? Oh boy. Um, <clears throat> oh, I, I honestly don't, I don't know, Cindy, if you have a guess on that or not. I, I, I'm gonna, of course, I'm gonna tell you, I hope not, but I don't know that, Tom. So it's kind of a one time. Yeah, I don't, I honestly don't know. Well, and part, part of the issue has been where we were in our cycles with contracts. You know, our, our, our contracts, in this current year are four years old, right? So they were based on salary numbers from 2019. We moved percentage wise, but in 2019, who anticipated the new world? <laughs> so the contracts we compared to have all been settled since COVID. So those numbers seem to be more real at this point. In three years, what does that look like? I, I don't know. I don't know how you predict that. So part of catching up was cyclical, just because of where we were in the contract process. Um, and then, you know, just how everything changed, inflation, all of those things. So it's hard to guess. Part of what, part of what um, gets a little um, challenging for us to share with you without doing these studies or without really um, pressuring some people for information is just how um, that information is shared regarding communities. So, you know, we truly, there might be one other community that does it like us, but we truly, when I, when people say, what kind of raises are you giving in Johnston? You know, we really say ours is really based on performance. I have a pool of money. We have a pool of money and what's in the budget right now is 6% on everyone's wage. And I take, and do a spreadsheet of everyone's current pay times 6%, 3%, 2%, whatever it was that particular year, and I get a dollar amount. Then I take that dollar amount and, and I have been adding to it each year, the council has authorized a $25,000 performance management pay that we just put in the city manager's budget. I add that $25,000 to whatever that 3% number or 2% or whatever, this should be six, and I have a pool of money. That's the pool of money that I'm able to work with to develop the matrix that allows us to give raises based on people's performance and based on where they're at in their pay range. So in a pay range right now, we have minimum, market, and maximum. When I look at their ranges, so we have quadrant one, two, three, and four. 
And if you're in quadrant two, you're below market. If you're in quadrant three, you're above market. So three and four are above market, two and one are below market. The raises for the individuals that are in two and one are higher than the people that are in three and four. If you're in four, that means you're going to be at the, the, the maximum quadrant that is. And so when I develop that matrix each year, what I've been basing that matrix on is quadrant four successful performance. And what goes in that square, that box for the formula is the across the board wage increase you've given your AFSCME people. Because an AFSCME individual next year is gonna get a 4% raise. So the person in AFSCME that's at the top of their steps is gonna get a 4% raise. So the person that is not in the union but gets a successful performance review and they're at the top of the quadrant is gonna get a 4% raise. If you're lower in the quadrants, just like the people lower at AFSCME, they'll get steps too. Remember, they continue to get steps as they survive by years. Our people that aren't union get to move through that range based on their performance. So a successful employee that has a quadrant one is getting a bigger raise than a successful employee who's in quadrant four. And the purpose of that and the original goal was to try to get every employee to at least market. And if possible, can we get them over market? We'd like our people to be paid at least what the market's doing. And we're okay if we're a little above market. We don't necessarily want to be the highest paid person out there or city out there, but we want to be comparable. So that's been the goal for the past seven or eight or nine years, however many years I've been doing this, of how they've moved through the, through the ranges. So when I say to another city, and then they say, what kind of raises are you given? I'll say, well, we budgeted six. My quadrant base is going to be four. I mean, so that's what I'm saying to them. And then I build my matrix around that. So if you're in quadrant one and you exceed, you might get an eight or 9% raise because you're clear at the bottom of your range and you did a heck of a job for the city this year. And it's based on, in our performance system, you have to do, you have to do all so many seeds and the, the method is not loved by my department directors <laughs> by the amount of stuff they have to go through to give someone any seeds, but that's how it works. When we ask other cities, and I get, we got, we budgeted 3%. <clears throat> I can guarantee you that they budgeted 3%, but they still have steps that they're moving those people through. And that, that picture is not a clear picture for other cities that don't have a, have a pay system like we do. So the cities that Sarah and I were at with uh, two weeks ago, week and a half ago, the raid, the wages are increasing for positions amongst the cities in the metro area from 3% to 8.5%. And when they tell me that, they're literally, one city is literally doing 8.5%. And on top of that, that some of their people might be getting steps. We're talking 12. They want to catch up. They feel like they're behind. Some of the other cities are given six. You know, I said we budgeted six, but our percentage uh, or our quadrant is going to be based on four. If you want to say we have six in our budget for raises, wages, that's what you can say. <coughs> so hard, and that's why these studies are so important and so painful to do and painful to respond to them when we get them from other cities. We really have to do that and have this consultant tear it all down and get down to the, to the, to the nitty gritty to tell us how we really are faring amongst other cities. And so we're looking forward to, to really getting the good data and um, really being able to honestly say to you, oh, Tom, I was wrong when I talked to you in, in March and um, I'm going to need 170 for three years. I mean, I honestly don't know. You know, I just don't know. But um, what are the, this is sort of a follow up. So, and this is a two part question. So, one is actually, it's just a one part. But one thing that would be helpful is so the system you described mm -hmm. of sort of putting people and assessing mm -hmm. them, that I presume that's all for non union employees, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, from, from, our, from my standpoint, 
I obviously presume that most everybody I'm looking at in the room today is a non-union employee for mm -hmm. your all management, but I couldn't tell you how many other employees in the city are non-union. Okay. So one thing that would be kind of helpful from my perspective, if it's if it's appropriate to share, is is to say, all right, here's the city, and we have X number of employees, and there's there's 40 in the police department, and of those 40 people in the police department. 37 of them are union and three of them are non union. If it's possible to break that out Absolutely. by department, library, fire department, Absolutely. and just and share that information, Absolutely. that would be because the system you described is really helpful, but I don't know if that applies to 15% of our employees or 5% or, or what the percentage is. So that would be just a helpful piece sure. of, of Absolutely. information. Is it safe to say then the 6% is an average? In our matrix, I don't know if it will be, um, Jim, because it, all, it also matters uh, when we develop that matrix. It depends on how many people get successful and meets and um, they successful or exceeds. If we have a lot of people that are getting exceeds, that comes down because we you can have can't have to everybody exceeding. So, um, if we're if we're if we're saying we're going to go six percent. But then you're you're I'm hearing that somebody may not get six percent. That's right. We don't really use it as a percentage, we use it as dollars. So six percent <laughs> wage is the pool that, that yeah. gets spread out. So so it's safe to say that we're not giving every employee six percent. Absolutely very safe to say that. Okay. That's Very important. Important. And if you're, an, I mean, if you're an ASME employee, you're getting four because four, you're in the union and the union contract is 4% and it does a whole the thing, everything you just described does not apply. Is That's that correct. a I, mean, I'm, I just want to make sure I understand. That's absolutely that correct. But, but correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but 4% would be if you're top of scale. You can also progress through the steps. You could, right, sure. Yes. You could, right, yes. right, 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 right. You could get a step, you could get a step and a. What's a step increase? 4%. So, so they could get eight. More than likely, they're, they'll, most of them will get a four on July 1st, and then whenever their anniversary is throughout the years when they move a step. So. So Council Member Evans, as I have grown to understand how we, you know, how we come up with the dollars to pay our employees their salary increases. I, you know, I was under the impression that the 6% meant that everybody gets a 6%. And now I'm understanding, and here's how I think about it. Um, Teresa and Cindy actually have three pools that they're working with. They have the big pool, the 6% pool. They have the performance pool that, pool. that, that we've you know, funded for years. And then what we're looking at here in the budget packages, decision packages, is another pool. So they have, they have some flexibility with all of those pools to make adjustments and to pay extra for, for, for performance. And you're absolutely right. Not everybody's probably going to get the 6%, but then some people are going to get a 10%, you know, because, you know, they've, you know, they've, they've, they've performed and, or, uh, you know, as a result of, you know, the review that Teresa and, and Cindy have done, they, they've determined that there needs to be some adjustment up. Do we have for non union, do we have steps as well, or is it just all? You're in a range, okay, okay. So you're, it's all, it's truly performance assessment as opposed to a time, time served or time served. That's not the right term. But <laughs> <laughs> feels, feels like it. I'm working on some probation legislation at the Capitol, so sorry about that. This is a life sentence, folks. <laughs> Can I, Mike, can I direct a question through you to Teresa? If let's hypothetically say, though, that we have a, an employee who's in quadrant one below market who doesn't receive a exceeds uh, expectation type uh, allocation in your mind, where's a where's a fair compromise to be able to bring that position? Excuse they'll, me. They'll probably still get it uh, if they're there. They have to at least be in the range. I'm going to get them in the range mm -hmm. for sure, but then they'll probably still at least 
probably get at least a six or a seven to get them to get them start moving up through there. As depending again on how many numbers, what my numbers look like. Um, for how many had for not for a non exceeds for non exceeds yes oh they get nothing well, oh no, a non exceeds no no not below uh, successful uh, there's there's needs improvement successful or exceeds if you're a needs improvement you get zero even if you're in quadrant one even if you're in quadrant one if you're a needs improvement you go on a performance improvement plan. And until you successfully pass your performance improvement plan, you do not get a salary increase. Can you describe, Teresa, just what, what that means? If, if someone is in that needs improvement, what, what is the quality of their work? What, what puts them there? Can I, can I jump in quick? Sure. If you're getting a needs improvement, you're not finding that out on your evaluation. Oh, yeah, you already knew you that. You already know that. You're not surprised by that at evaluation time. You're already on a performance improvement plan and, and working forward. You can get on a performance improvement plan anytime during the year, but if, but if by chance they're coming at the same time, that's what it's gonna be. If you're on a performance improvement plan and you went on to that important performance improvement plan on April 1st, it's usually, maybe I should've said May 1st, May 1st. Um, you have so many days to get your um, performance improved. Um, so on July 1st, you're still improving. You don't get your raise until you've per successfully completed your performance improvement plan. And at that point, they would be reevaluated, and then hopefully they're a successful. So they'd go back up to that quadrant run, and then they would get whatever everyone else in quadrant one got that was a success. They would just get it at that time, not at the beginning of July. So they wouldn't have to wait a whole year? No. Okay. No. And one more hypothetical. And we'll, we can extend those. So it's usually a performance improvement. Excuse me for interrupting you. You're fine. But normally they're 90 days, correct? And um, and you meet with them at 45 days, and then at 90 days you should be done. You can extend those another 45 days. If if that still hasn't happened at that point, that employee technically is usually terminated. Since you brought up either termination, but or we can even say voluntary separation, uh, and we need to fill a position, do we anticipate that filling that position, if if the previously uh, the, the previous position was paid less than market, that we will immediately uh, bring that position up to market when we fill it again? Um, I would I would say yes. Because, I mean, technically. They may still be in quadrant one. It would, might be still in quadrant one, but normally we, we don't hire below market or below, below the starting wage of the range. But, but you would describe that market is actually that border between two quadrants two and three? Right. We don't necessarily hire at market either. Okay, that's what I We hire between the beginning of the minimum and market. Okay. Typically. Right. And depending on the number of applicants we had, maybe the special qualifications we needed, the the actual market out there, um, the, all kind of dictates how far into the range we go when we hire them. Okay. Can you Thank think you. of anybody we've hired recently that we got for a really good deal? Oh. <laughs> hey, back to Mike. Uh, question for you. Fire yourself. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it's been fun. <laughs> I, was, I said it was a good deal. We got a heck of a deal. Heck of a deal. <laughs> Other questions or comments from Mike, Teresa, Cindy? Thoughts? So one. So we kind of, as Mike kind of talked about, it, kind of this ten dollars and eighty-five cent option. I think one of the things that is we look at this. So if you do the if you have the neighborhood development and you do it for six months, then you have it's kind of a, a, it's a sort of a built in expense for next year too, right. right? So you're sliding in essence that other half. So as we start the budget year next year, 
So you're saving three cents off the levy this year, but you're starting next year right off the bat with having to fill the back half of those. Absolutely. So, I mean, I, I, um, I think everybody should be aware of that. Um, and that, and, and next year is not necessarily going to be better than this year. Um, irregardless of any public policy decisions that the legislature might make, knowing that the rollback is, uh, is projected to drop very significantly. Um, so, you know, while it, while it may seem appealing to hold off on the neighborhood development for six months or the division commander position for six months, doing those two things saves three cents. So you're looking at a levy option of ten dollars and eighty-five cents, or ten dollars and eighty-eight cents, and and I think it it may not that may not be the most prudent decision um, because I think you could make a good case that the the prudent decision is to budget for them for the full twelve months. If you don't end up having them on staff for the full twelve months. That's money that goes into the reserve, so it's available. It's not spent, um, and it gives us flexibility. And I, I and I don't think there's a significant difference in the levy of ten dollars and eighty five cents or ten dollars and eighty eight cents. Um, and I, I, I really, I don't think it's a prudent decision to kind of get in the habit of funding these positions for six months. And so I, I really, if it was, if we were saving 15 cents on the levy, boy, that'd be a different deal altogether. Uh, but for three cents, I'm not real excited about those two decisions. I, I would suggest we, um, if we're going to fund them, we should fund them or, or not fund them. Um, but I would, I would, I would have a preference of funding them for the both 12 months, given that it's only, it's not a significant impact from the budget. But if others disagree, I mean, I'm not going to hold out for. But to me, I, I think there's. I just think from a from a budgeting standpoint, that's a better decision. So, Tom, I appreciate you speaking up about that. I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. I I would rather see them uh, come into fruition from the beginning of the fiscal year. Um, it's not like these changes or decision packages are one time. We would be having to face them the next budget year. I think we need to prepare for them, and I and I certainly think um, they're going to help our community um, immediately as soon as they go into effect. So I would definitely um, uh, agree that those would not be ones that I would necessarily need us to be able to strike in that process. I also would invite perhaps meeting more in the middle with regard to that extra pool to be able to make up the difference. Um, I have no sense as to where this is going to come in in that compensation study. I know you don't either. Um, and I know you really are just trying to want to be as fair as possible to retain the excellent talent we have within the city, but also uh, pay competitively so that we can retain it, but also attract new. And so that's where I might propose in that instance that we could shave that off to 1% versus the 2% uh, meeting closer to that as opposed to the, the 0.5. Again, I don't know where that pool is overall. So. And I guess I would push back just a little bit on that, partly because in listening to Teresa, as I understand it, we built in already six, a 6% 6 increase into the budget. So I think we've got a really solid number there. And so an extra half percent, I think, First of all, and again, it kind of goes to, to the dynamic too. So a half percent is two and a half cents, right? So right now, if we do these other two items, we're at 1088. If you go to the full percent, if you go to 1% as opposed to half a percent, you're now, that's another two and a half cent on the levy. So now you're over 1090. It's like, I mean, so I, I, I think you just have to kind of think about, I mean, I do think there's psychologically, there's some benefit of keeping it below in the 1080s as opposed to going above and, and I and I think especially listening to Teresa and sort of laying it out that we've, we've got a six percent amount in the budget I feel really comfortable with the half a percent number um, and especially given that that's a um, for each two and a half percent or each quarter percent you do there whether it's 25 percent or if, if you do a half I'm sorry if you do a half a percent 
it's two and a half cents on the levy. If you go to 1%, it's another two and a half cents on the levy. So that's starting, that gets to be, to me, I think you should, we should do a mix of those three that gets us in that 1088 range um, or 1085. Somewhere. So yeah, if you do a half a percent, you'd be at 1088,466. If you do 1%, it'd be at 1091,104. Let me uh, let me share with you just a little bit of the logic and trying to get to, to at least 10 cents in a reduction from 1 to 30 cents. I know that you all received a copy of the Des Moines Register article that Mike sent out um, last week. And if people are being honest and, and uh, the information was being reported accurately, um, there's only two cities in the entire metro that were reported in this article that are increasing their property tax levy at all. One is Ames, and I think it said 13 cents is what they're looking at. And the other is Johnston at 30 cents. Others are saying that they're going to either keep their property tax levy at the same or reduce it. And by and to do it, they were going to lay people off, not fill vacancies, you know, take some other measures to, to reduce their budgets. My reaction to that was we can't be that much of an outlier. We can't be at 30 cents when you know, the only other community that is increasing their property tax levy is doing it by 13 cents and the rest of them are saying they're not going to do it at all. So my 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 request to to Mike and to Teresa was, you know, let's see if we can find 10 cents, reduce it from the 30 cents to the 20 cents that still puts us as you know that at, 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 you know at the top, but you know to again to argue that. I was I'm comfortable with that is that that is what it costs to pay for the firefighters and, and the police officers, so I you know that is what I got comfortable with um, if we add back in and you know I, I hear you and um, I respect that, but if we add back in then we're getting you know we're moving back towards that 30 cents the logic that. I feel comfortable uh, with these two um, line items in terms of just funding them for a half a year. Um, the, as, as Mike said, the neighborhood development staff person, you bring them in in July. It takes some time for them to, to train, to get up to speed, to know our community, to know what our laws are. At that point, it's October, November. They really can't do the job well at that point anyway you bring them in in january they're spending january february march you know the, the 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 cold winter months getting trained up and then they are set to go when when spring is here and and uh, can, can can do their job through the summer and, and uh into the fall so um i you know i i would i would typically argue against half your funding for positions but in this case it makes sense to do that i you know i think it's 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 more responsible to pay for a half year if it's if there's the logic behind it that this person you know can it's better to bring them on in january to do the job and do it well than to bring them on in july and then have them you know uh not not being as effective and and uh working at their full capacity well i just want to push back i guess I, can i finish what oh, I'm, I'm, saying? I'm sorry i okay. thought you were done i, I, I I thought you were done. Later. Okay. I respectfully, I thought you were okay. done. You talked for quite a while. I thought you were done. Sorry. Okay. Um, the the other uh, item is something that you know was discussed with the chief. It was his lowest priority in terms of budget packages, and he he said he was he was he was completely comfortable with moving in that direction. And that's a reclassification. That's an increase in well, it, it essentially an increase in pay. Can I jump in? So, no, um, go ahead. Tom, I, 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 I defer to Jim, and I'll then I'll okay. go after Jim. Okay. okay. I, I guess I'm confused. I mean, thank you, Mayor, for being honest. I'm going to be as honest as I can be. You know, two meetings ago, we were sitting here. I think it was here, and we were all freaking out on ten cents increase. And then somehow this just kind of, and I was one of those that behind the scenes is like, 
well, we're going to have Armageddon next year. Let's raise it to 30 cents, you know, so we can soften the blow going forward. And that got kicked back. And then this just kind of magically slid into this 30 cent thing. And I'm surprised that we're, we're sitting here accepting the 30 cent thing, considering a couple months ago, 10 cents or 11 cents was hard for us to digest. And after reading that article, yeah, I was embarrassed. And I'm, I'm looking at other cities who are, they're not filling positions or they're not giving raises or they're cutting positions. We, we aren't making those tough decisions. We're, 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 we're doing our best, you know, to keep everyone happy. And that, that's what we have to do, you know, but one of the things I, you know, and I threw this out this afternoon, but, or maybe I didn't, but like these two positions for the maintenance worker and public works, the maintenance worker, water works. There's two positions that if we're going to give our people incentives to do a better job, we're already giving them the increase, the, the allowed increase in their pay. Maybe we hold those off for a year, try out this 6% idea or better, you know, and, and have our current employees prove themselves even more. Sorry, Matt you know, and, and take those two positions and get us back below maybe even 20 cents. I don't know. What, what positions are you talking about, Jim? The priority six and seven. So, and, and I think we can look at all those, but that would be a case where those two positions are being funded out of utilities. Uh, so oh, yeah, removing I those doesn't impact the coming from. Yeah, but anyway, I just, I have a hard time at 10 cents, 20 cents and 30 cents gives me the chills, but I get it. Um, but anyway, well, I just okay. want to make sure to just to where we are currently. So currently, our current budget is ten dollars and sixty eight cents, right? Yep. So right now we're debating between ten dollars and eighty five cents, or ten dollars and eighty eight cents. Is that right? Yes. So one is a seventeen cent increase, and one is a twenty cent increase. So I think everybody has rejected the 30 cent increase. Maybe not. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Maybe not. Okay. But, um, and that's fine. And, and maybe, and, and there, I guess there is another option of, of going to so maybe a, there's some 20, 20, 20 and a half cents or so. Yes. And I guess what I'm saying is maybe there's someplace else where we can take a deeper dive and see, do we need the streetscape? Do we need the pool thing? And, and I know these are very, special projects to people but is this the year that we want to do that well again so, both of those are not funded out of the general fund though they're all this, lost they're all out of the local options the streetscape but and if, but the, if we had more money and lost to buy down the tax oh i tried that earlier today you should have been here at 10 o'clock <laughs> got my butt kicked <laughs> um so i went down that path um, and I guess I'm going to, I'm open to having a, another work session before the next meeting um, to really be honest and really lay everything on the line. Well, I think we are. Don't, I feel like we are being honest. I, 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 think, yes, we're, I, I think this is a great discussion where everybody's I, feeling an opportunity to speak yep, their mind. And so. I, I totally agree. But we're, we're up against the time again. This is probably not going to get reviewed for another two weeks. Um, and what I would say is I know myself, Teresa, we're happy to sit down at any point um, and talk with any council member uh, or the public. But I think having us together rather than the two here, the two here, the one call here, I think having us all together in the same room it has some real benefit. I, I agree with that. And what I would suggest council member evans is you know we're, we're we've said that we'll get back together again in two weeks after people have after you've all had an opportunity to you know take another look at the budget have some more conversations we'll get back together again then and have another discussion just like we're having tonight and hopefully come to some conclusions and give some direction so that that would be the goal so I just want to make sure I understand. So basically, because one of the concerns I heard was sort of you have to publish something in the Des Moines Register, and that that publication also has to does that have to include the tax rate? 
So that, and that's a max rate, not the max levy, but that's, you can't go, or is there no? That is your budget, what we publish in the register. That'll well, be whatever we publish, you can only go lower than, okay. Tom. And the, when I talked about the, the dates this morning to you, I, um, I wanted to go back and, and double check when I had said to you, you know, I have, I, if we're going to have our public hearing on April 17th, the earliest I could publish um, a publication notice in the paper is March 28th. The latest I can do is March 7th. And so here's my fear if <clears throat> you wait to make your final decision at that first meeting in April. I can't, I can't get it to the paper to get it in the paper fast enough because of those dates. So at the next meeting, I'm going to have to know what that levy number is so that I can create the budget hearing, the budget notice and the budget hearing. And I have to have all the documents ready 20 days before your hearing. I have to have a book at the library, the mayor's office, the clerk's office, the things that are required by 384. And so, you know, we can talk at the next meeting as well, but that's the night that I, I have to know what a rate is. Well, our, if we, if we, if for some reason, I mean, we had, I think we had a really good discussion tonight. If for some reason we don't settle on the next meeting, if we had to, couldn't we schedule another meeting before? We, yes, we would have. I, mean, I, I just think, yeah. I think yes. I agree 100% with Councilman Evans that having us all here in the discussion is the best approach. So I think that's a very good point. I think that's how we'll, that's how we'll get to consensus. Um, and so I, and if that means we have to have another meeting, we, We'll just have to figure out how to do that. I think we made a lot of progress tonight. That was a good discussion tonight and laid some options out. So. And I would, I would just encourage any, everyone, you know, if you have questions, if you have ideas, please get a hold of Mike and share those with him so that, you know, we, you know, he can, he can respond to them. He can gather information for you and, and uh, you can continue your thought process in terms of what, this what you a, would be comfortable with. This was a very good discussion tonight. But I do think there are a lot of questions that get asked that we can help yep. expedite some of these discussions. Yep. So certainly, you know, I'm available, Teresa's available, your department directors are available. We, we want to get you the information. So please, you know, reach out to us uh, and have those discussions. We are having a finance committee meeting Friday morning, 7.30 or 8 was the question. I can do either time, but... So if, if there's some other questions that people have and they'd like me to get more information, um, I'll be sure to grab, send it out before then as well. I, as, as best as possible and as transparent as possible, as those conversations come in, I feel a little bit blindsided by the mayor's request of decreased 10 cents, that now we're faced with that decision and have to chew on it. I appreciate that, that, that you challenge that. But at the same point, we don't know who else is asking for what. So to the, the point that you can kind of fairly clue everyone in on conversations. It's a fine line because I, we got to be transparent. I and I think, for our attorney. Well, and that's why I think uh, Councilmember <laughs> yeah. Evans is maybe on the right point of continuing to have these open uh, dialogues so that we all can hear it at the same point and, sure. and go yeah, through and, those and Absolutely. But, but we also want to follow open meeting right so that's why well, we don't send I, out i believe a work session would be a, a fair way to do that so but don't wait until the next meeting to ask your questions because you because there's i mean there's always those questions that come up and ideas and certainly some of those have merit we can say hey bring it forward some of those we can maybe explain right well streetscape's not going to impact you know, eliminating streetscape doesn't lower the levy because of this. You know, we want to have those dialogues. Don't, don't don't put this on pause and wait for the next meeting. But if you have questions, make sure you have the conversation with Mike and get the answers you need. Is it appropriate if you have a question to CC all the other members of the council so they see the question? I, I mean, I, that would be a way. You know, maybe you I, could it, do it's a not Q a deliberation. A, uh, do some sort of fact sheet. You know, if, yeah, we can it, do some it, of that. If I, I will CC all the members of the council that way, everybody else has an opportunity. If the people don't want that approach, that's fine. But that's the approach I'm going to take. Well, we'll get, we'll get a little more guidance from our attorney when she gets up here, but, but we'll hold that until the end of the meeting. Okay. We, uh, we have exhausted our time and we have an additional item under the, uh, work, work session. 
Clayton, can 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 we have that conversation at the end of the regular? I said either at the end of the meeting or just building off energy for it. Okay, we can do it the next time. Is everybody comfortable with that? Just sure. Holding sure. that yeah. conversation off. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. Thank you, Clayton. Okay, let's go ahead and adjourn the uh, work session then.